Good morning. I have a couple of scriptures I'd like to share with you this morning. You know, we just came through Easter, uh, Good Friday, Monday, Thursday. This is the whole, was the holiest time in Christianity that we celebrate the very work of the cross and celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And uh, we can oftentimes go through these, uh, this uh, celebration year after year and it becomes almost repetitious to us. And we don't take the time to really stop and, and try and grab something new out of it. And the Lord had, had been sp spoke to my heart, and, and I think that I got something new in this, a, a, new, a depth of uh, understanding I'd like to share with you this morning. You see, when Jesus hung on the cross, it says now, uh, in Matthew chapter 27, verse 45, it says, now from the sixth hour until the ninth hour, there was darkness over all the land. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, saying uh, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of those who stood there, when they heard that, said, this man is calling for Elijah. Immediately, one of them ran and took a sponge, filled it with sour wine, and put it on a reed, and offered it to him to drink. The rest said, let him alone. Let's see if Elijah will come to save him. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. Then behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and the earthquake and the rocks were split. He yielded up his spirit. You know, what does that mean, he yielded up his spirit? You know, that Jesus came to us in the form of a man. He came to us with, with a free will. Without that free will, he could not have been the sacrificial lamb because every time he was tempted, the scripture says that he was tempted in every way that we are tempted, he chose the Father's way. He yielded himself to the Father. And when Jesus was hanging on the cross, it says that it got so dark, and I believe that that time was when all the sins of the world were just laid upon him, and God the Father could have absolutely nothing to do with it unrighteousness and all of our unrighteousness all of sin and that's what sin is is unrighteousness was laid upon Jesus and God the Father could have nothing to do with Jesus at that time he at that moment the only time in all of eternity God the Father and God the Son were separated and we, they were separated because Jesus was willing to take your sin and my sin upon himself he yielded himself to the right to be God and to take on that sin and become that sacrificial lamb of God that would take away the sins of the world. It says it yielded up his spirit. You know, when you come into an intersection, and in that intersection you may see a sign that says yield. That means that you yield your right of way to the person that's coming, coming on, on the other side. They have the right to go through. You don't. You need to yield to them. If you don't yield, there's going to be an accident. Or very well could be an accident. You know, and oh, what an accident it would have been if Jesus chose not to yield up his spirit at that time. See, this was his final time to bow to the will of the Father as a man, as a human being, as God in the flesh. He yielded up his right to be God and he died. He died, he took those sins, and he took them and put them in the grave. They took that body down off the grave, and uh, off the, uh, the cross, and put him in the grave, and rolled a stone, and sealed him there. He was sealed in there, a dead man. The guy was dead. Jesus was dead. Why? Because he yielded up. His spirit. He yielded up his right to be God and not taste death. And he tasted death for you and me so that you and I would not have to taste death. Simply by receiving him as Lord and Savior. But what does that mean? What does it mean to receive him as Lord and Savior? John said in 1 John chapter 5, if you receive him, you receive that life. If you reject him, you reject that life. It's, it's that simple. But when I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord, that means I have to yield my will over to the Father's will. That means that the choices that I am given are now choices I'm going to make for the Father, to love him and to show him that I love him. You know, uh, Jesus said back in, in uh, Matthew chapter 7, verse 21, he said some very sobering words. He says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. 
but he who does the will of my Father. He who will yield himself over to the Father. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Depart from me. You may be doing these religious things, but depart from me because you're practicing lawlessness. You're not practicing these things out of a depth of relationship with me. You're doing them trying to please me. He says, depart from me, but I never, I never knew you. I never had that intimacy with you. I never had that relationship with you. I never had that, that uh, love from you to me. You were just doing things to try and please me. You want to please me? Love me. Yield your life to me. I yielded my life for you. And I gave up my spirit. And the scripture says that when he did that, that the veil was ripped from top to bottom, signifying that you and I, now we have that high priest. We don't need that yearly high priest anymore to go in. But Jesus was the forerunner and he went in by his blood for you and for me. Hallelujah for that. Yield your life to God. Because there's so many blessings in that. When we don't, there's curses. Jesus loves you with an everlasting love. Yield yourself over to him. Blessings. Thank you.